There. So good afternoon, grade 9. Let's have the continuation of the discussion that we had last Tuesday. Last Tuesday, the discussion ended with rhyme. Rhyme being classified as external and internal, external or end rhyme, and internal rhyme. We also had the gender of rhyme as masculine, feminine, and the gender could be possibly unknown. We also went with rhyme to be classified as either perfect or imperfect. This time, we will have this continuation. Wait. Oh, there, once again. Let's give it a few seconds. There. there again is rhyme. Main types that I showed to you were external or end rhyme and internal rhyme. I added that with feminine, masculine, and unknown rhyme. And I also proceeded with perfect and imperfect rhyme. Aside from rhyme, which is an important element in poetry, we have another element and that has something to do with this. Onomatopoeia, assonance, consonance, and alliteration. Let me start with onomatopoeia. For a number of years, maybe you've been told that onomatopoeia is a figure of speech. But I'd like to also remind everybody that when you look at the definition of a figure of speech, a figure of speech is identified as an expression. Again, by that, I'm referring to the figure of speech here. A figure of speech is, a, is an expression that is not to be understood in its literal meaning Rather, it is to be seen in the underlying meaning behind that expression. When you look at onomatopoeia, it actually does not bear any underlying meaning at all. Why? What are examples of onomatopoeia? Like this, the hissing of the snake made me shoo it away. Or, the bubbling brook breaks. What does onomatopoeia do? Onomatopoeia, as, a figurative, as part of figurative languages, tries to mimic or imitate sounds produced by nature or those sounds that you could capture in the environment where you are in. So it is an imitation, once again, of sounds in the environment or of nature. And when you look at these two sentences, is there any underlying meaning that we can find in them? There's none. It though appeals to how something sounds to you. That is why instead of calling calling onomatopoeia a figurative a figure of speech, it is better to call it a figure of sound. In fact, onomatopoeia, alliteration, consonance, and assonance, the ones that you have in your module, they are called figures of sound and not figures of speech. So that's onomatopoeia for you. The hissing of the snake. Because snakes create the hissing sound. The and so it's been turned into a word to correspond to that sound. And so comes this expression. It is part of figurative language, but it technically is not a figure of speech. Next, alliteration. Also, when we were in elementary, we've been told that alliteration is one of the many figures of speech. But what is the concept behind alliteration? Alliteration tells us that there is an initial consonant sound that is dominant in a line. Meaning, when you read that line and when you listen to that line, there is a dominant initial consonant sound that you could detect. And in fact, what we could closely associate to alliteration is our experience of tongue twisters. Because that's how tongue twisters are commonly structured. A dominant consonant, initial consonant sound is played along. So when we listen to it, when we listen to the line, it sounds playful, it sounds nice, it sounds good because of the dominant initial consonant sound. If you look at the definition there, repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of the words. So that's the dominant initial consonant sound. For example, doubting, drearing dreams, no mortal. In here, there is a consonant sound that's dominant and it's the D consonant sound. 
we are not after of the orthogra ortho orthographic character. We are not after of the letter itself. We are really after of the sound behind that letter. You have this complete line. Doubting, dreaming, dreams, no mortal enter, dared to dream before. So you have the, the the consonant sound to be dominant in this line. This line is by Edgar Allan Poe. What are your common knowledge on tongue twisters? What are the commonly known tongue twisters that you have? Claire, what tongue twister can you think of, Claire? Go, go, go. Is it Peter Potter or Peter Piper? I thought it's Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled pepper? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, where's the peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? Is that not the one that you're referring? Is that the one that we're referring to? And in that four-line tongue twister. There are there's just one consonant sound that's really initially dominant, and it's the the p consonant sound. I didn't say the letter P. I'm not after the letter P. I'm after of the consonant sound that we produce for that character. Or your she sells seashells on the seashore. There are two consonant dominant sounds that are initially sounded there. You have the s sound and the sh consonant sound. See again, we are after of alliterations and we associate them to tongue twisters because tongue twisters also do that. They produce a dominant initial consonant sound. But of course, there's also a possibility that the dominant sound within words is a vowel sound. And so we have assonance. Assonance tells us that there is a repeated or a dominant vowel sound in a line or in a group of lines. For example, along the windowsill, the lipstick stabs glittered in their steel shells. In here, again, you have to listen. You have to read the line and listen to how you've read the line. Along the windowsill, the lipstick stabs glittered in their steel shelves. What's dominant in this line is the I, the short I, vowel sound. Not the letter I. We are not after the letter I, but the short vowel sound, which is I. Along the windowsill, the lipstick stabs glittered in their steel shells. That is for assonance as a dominant vowel sound exists. This one is by Rita Dog. Consonance is also another figure of sound or poetic device that tells us of a dominant consonant sound which is not an initial sound. I hope you could see the difference between alliteration and consonance. For alliteration, the dominant consonant sound happens to be an initial sound. Like in the case of doubt, the consonant, the initial consonant sound there is d. Dream, d. Dreary, d. So we we put them for alliteration because the cons consonant sound is an initial. The dominant consonant sound is an initial sound. For consonance, it is. For a dominant consonant sound, which is not an initial sound. Possibly, it's within the word or it could be at the last part of the word. What's important there is that the consonant sound that's dominant is not an initial sound. It's not the first sound produced. For example, some late visitor and entreating entrance at my chamber door. So you listen to it once again. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. See, there's a consonant sound that's dominant. And it's the what sound is it that's dominant here, Prisha? 
Again, the line is, Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. What consonant sound is dominant? From a simple course, gravity escapes. Then followed by strong force, then all the other forces divide. Sound, sound, just the sound. Not a word, but a sound. So when we talk of sounds, we... Uh, for a while. When we talk of sounds, we remind ourselves of what are the vowel sounds, consonant sounds. We are not after of characters or of words. We are after of the sounds they produce. Like what I did earlier. Like like this one. Lollif, lo, lollif. Lollipop lovables. Lollif, lollif. Lollipop lovables. Lovely ladies. Oh. Listen to that. Listen to these four words. Lollipop, lovables, lovely ladies. What's the dominant consonant sound? Clarice. That's the start of the synthesizing of these parts. In turn, it became protons or... Correct. It's the L sound. From lollipop, lovable... Uh, what was that? Lovely and ladies. In four word, in these four words, that consonant sound was dominant. And we we bring our attention to this one. Some late, listen. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. So a consonant sound can be dominantly heard, thereby creating consonants in this. First, uh, in this, in this yes, version of the phrase. So, what sound am I referring to, Krisha? Photons and neutrons, but after the radiation era comes the modern era, and now again, sorry. Electromagnetic force now starts to ah, okay. Capture Perhaps that's just the orbital sound. About what about chamber? There's something common with chamber visitor. Entreating entrance. See? Oh wait. Is it? Did you not? Did you not have a speech class last year? Hi. Like a separate elective speech class. If only. Literature, but last before there really was a separate speech class, and the teacher, the subject was taught by Mam Zen. She handled the speech class in the high school department before, and Mam Zen was really good at determining sounds and providing sounds of words. And so, how did Krisha determine the rrr sound? She listened. I bet Krisha Krisha listened to the dominant sound coming from the entire line. What else is uh, is the dominant sound that we can hear from this line? Mm. Is there an, another sound that we could dominantly get from this line? So, the consonant. We're after of a consonant sound. Because this is for consonants, not anymore for assonants. Then comes now the gravitational force. Of course, again, again, sorry. Formation of the solar system is... Shania seems to disagree with you on that. Is there... Uh, you seem to have disagreed with that answer, Shania. Is there another consonant sound that you could determine? Correct. There's still a consonant sound. As in the case of late, visitor, entreating, at. At least four words share the same sound. For what Krishna said and what Shania shared, this word or this phrase, this verse really qualifies under consonants as dominant consonant sounds are heard. And take note, the ones that Shania and Krishna gave us are not initial consonant sounds. Where can you find the R sound or the R sound that Krishna was referring to earlier? Either in the middle, if not at the last. 
And the same goes yeah. with what Shania gave. Yeah. Compared to alliteration, in the example for alliteration earlier, where the consonant sound was an initial sound. Let's proceed. This was, by the way, by Edgar Allan Poe. Here's a line here that says, through the words used by the poet and as expressed by the persona who happens to be the speaker, the vivid images, clear sounds, and exact feelings are clearly conveyed. The descriptions help in making sense of the poem. Actually, that's one power that poets have. Poets have the ability to maximize the power of suggestion. Poets rely so much in their ability to use words in order for readers to be able to picture out what they are trying to portray or to create in the poem that they are, they are making. In the field of poetry, images are banked on our right on the writer's use of words. When writers use words, they try to tap the senses of the readers. That when the writer mentions the crackling of the skies, the crack, yeah, crackling, cracking. The, I, I just not use this example. The the wailing, the wailing of the night. The word wailing appeals to your sense of sound, your sense of hearing. And so you can just try to picture out, or you can, you'll can you try your best as the reader, you would try your best to recall how a wailing sound is produced. Or when the writer says, the blue ocean, which is as blue as the sky. And so you can just try to imagine a blue color which is reflected on the sky, on the sea, on the ocean, as it came, as, as it, uh, well, as it is bouncing the color coming from the skies. That's how powerful words are that poets can use in dealing with poetry to create images that are really vivid, to produce sounds that are really clear, and to create feelings that are exact. Here, there's the selection that I was that I showed to you. Uh, that I mentioned at the start of this discussion, I even received a message from Shania, a message which came from Clarice, and Shania forwarded it to me. The question is, sir, we will do poetry reading, so how will it be done? What's like the mechanics behind poetry reading? My intention for poetry reading is for everybody to have an audience. But I'm, also, I'm actually also willing to let students do a video recording of themselves at home. So that's what we'll do. That kind of practice is not actually new to my students last year. As you are, uh, as I am a teacher to you this school year, I'd like to also share that kind of practice with you. For poetry reading, so many of those will be done by doing a video recording and having that video recording sent to me online. Whatever platform you'll use for the recording, it's up to you. There were there were students last year who used InShot. There's like an app, InShot. Is that like an app? Like people use that to edit videos. I don't give scores on how you beautify your background because that's not part of poetry reading. As for poetry reading, I'll be after of how you will have given justice to the delivery of the words as well as of the verses. Sir, is it all right, sir, if I'll just sit down? Yes, that's fine. Sir, is it all right if I put in gestures? When people do poetry reading, it doesn't mean that the person is just holding a copy and reading while looking at the camera. When people do poetry reading, they study. The, at that point, they will have already studied the material without forgetting that they should express through their faces and they should also make use of their hands while they can. Gestures should still be expressed. But they, in doing poetry reading, we are not to also exaggerate. I am always after of an elaborate performance. Take note. An elaborate delivery is different from an exaggerated delivery. 
an elaborate delivery is what's fitting in terms of the delivery of the text. The exaggerated form of it is beyond what's merely good. Oh, sorry, it's beyond what's just supposed to be done. That's too much already. And I would not want you to do that. I would not want anybody to say the seven ages of man. All the worlds are... If one of you does that, I'll right away send the video back to you. You don't have to overly dramatize the text. That's why I said earlier, in poetry reading, you're already expected to have studied the text before you submitted yourself to the actual act of reading poetry. How will you be able to study it? There are plenty of ways to do so, like what my students did before. They listen to how lines and verses are read online. There are also people who try to copy what their classmates did or what the teacher did. Whatever, their, whatever your style is, just keep in mind that your goal here is to give justice to the text. So here's the copy of the Seven Ages of Man. When you read it, when we read poetry, we read the verse, the lines, in terms of thought units. When we say thought units, you try to juncture your lines and determine which part begins the sentence and which part ends the sentence. Consider the lines as though they are, consider the verses as though they are sentences. One line doesn't mean a sentence right away. Because when we read sentences, sometimes we inject pauses. Longer or short pauses. We do that. And also, do not read it in a way that's going to really annoy the, read the listeners. What I mean is, please do not do this. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. If you do that, I'll send the video back to you. I will, and, and then I'll upload that video online. I'll upload that video on my YouTube channel. Have you seen the video that I uploaded last Tuesday? Uh, keep them coming, people, as, because I have this time. As of this time, I already have 216 subscribers. Feel free to subscribe, follow, and link. And follow the, click the link, follow, and subscribe. If I see a video of that sort for poetry reading, you'll find that the link be placed in Edmodo, and your classmates will have access to what you'll do and to what you will have done. So, when we read poetry, again, we read in thought units. I'll give you a sample way of reading it. Sample. I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. I'm not saying that my style is the best version of it. But I'll do my best to read it in thought units. The Seven Ages of Man by William Shakespeare. All the world's a stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. And then, the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like a snail unwillingly to school. And then, the lover. Sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress, mistress's eyebrow. Then a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice. In fair, round belly, with good capon lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise sauce and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful host, well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice, turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all, 
that ends this strange and strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. So that's my version of reading the seven ages of man. Correct, Shania. It's definitely that way. In doing poetry reading, it's as if we are still just sharing a story. Because poetry is under literature. And once again, in literature, we are sharing an experience. It's a story that we are sharing. It's just that the structure differs. It could be in stanza form or in paragraph form. If it were in paragraph form, that's prose. If it were in stanza form, that's poetry. See, I didn't go with... All the world's a stage and all the men and women, nearly players, they have their exits and entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. The moment I hear that, nah, if I hear someone do that, nah. So, that, so that's just my request. And again, you may have your own version of reading these lines. Just don't forget to have them read in thought units. Basically, The Seven Ages of Man, where okay. William Shakespeare tells us of the different stages from infants, from the birth of an infant to senescence. That period or stage in a person's life where he, is, he seems to be like in the pre-departure area from this world. Just waiting for that time when he is going to leave the human world. In that span of time, so many things can happen. The infant grows and becomes a younger version uh, of, of an adult that's a child, an adolescent, becomes a full-fledged adult, a working adult, that eventually get, getting to that point where he is already again in the pre-departure area towards another world. But look at what, look at what William Shakespeare did. He presented the different stages a person in a person's yeah, life. But he didn't just go with the first stage is infancy, be, uh, being an infant. The second stage is being a schoolboy or a schoolgirl. The second stage is he did not just become so he, he went beyond being so too direct for the purpose of creating or doing a creative material. For the purpose of inviting creativity in his work, he presented the different stages in the form of poetry. Before we answer the activities found in the module, I'd like to read, not graded yet, not graded yet, ha? Huh? Can I request at least one of you to read The Seven Ages of Man? Any volunteer, any volunteer. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Sir, can I just look at my copy for now because I haven't practiced yet? It's fine. What I'm after of is how you sound for now. But take note. I don't know if you've noticed, but when I read it earlier, my face wasn't bland. I did not have a bland expression. I have to make sure that my face still expresses. But I did not. Ex I don't. I don't need to exaggerate. Like I went with. All the world's a stage. All the men and women merely players. I don't have to be so overly dramatic. All the world's a stage and all men and all women. If one does that, uploaded video on YouTube. Anybody from the class who would like to willingly try to read this for everybody to hear? In Any volunteer? In fact, if no one volunteers, I'll pick the volunteer the for the class. The I'm looking at the list of 12 students, of 11, who has joined this call. Uh, hmm. Oh, there's only one boy in this group now? I think it's nice if you let that boy represent the class for now. Girls, how do you find it? Does it is it is it all right? I'm not just I'm just not sure because when Ray, if Rainiel tries to unmute himself, we could hear the video case session that's going on right now. 
Try unmuting yourself, Rainier. Someone's still picking a song. See, see? We could hear someone. However, I think Rainier would not disappoint us. I think Rainier would still be willing. Because ako, I heard, I heard that Rainier is the kind of person who would not let any sound distract him from his performance. I heard that Rainier wouldn't give up just because there's a distraction around him. Right? Right, girls? So everybody, let's give Rainier a round of applause. Let's give him the floor for his attempt to do the reading of the seven ages of man. Oh, by the way, let's make it uniform, everyone. When you do poetry reading, you read... What was that? You read the title and the name of the person who made it. So it was like The Seven Ages of Man by William Shakespeare. And then proceed. Rainil, we now... I'll put myself on mute so that you won't hear anyone else but just the voice of Rainil. Huh? It's all right. You have. You just have to read this. You just have to read this. Whatever. If you end up crying because of the poem that you will have read, it's all right. We won't judge. Last time I checked, Shakespeare made this, and it's not a com comic poem or one that should make you laugh. Rainier, you just, I could hear the voice of Nicole. Nicole is around. Nicole. I bet you find it all right for Rainiel to do the reading for it for the class. Oh. Okay, I'll now put myself on, on mute. Rainiel, we give the floor to you. Please go. Yes, yes. Refraction as it passes to a certain galaxy or to a certain uh, whirlpool of lights or whirlpool of uh, stars, which we call galaxy. As also in our case, we are one of the members of the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, any other uh, uh, any other observations? Please please to check. You know, they regulate everyone, uh, make uh, so called reading with respect to the site that I placed here. Who is the author of the website? For <laughs> general information, who is the author of the website? Is it the Chinese guy? So thank you for your observations and let's proceed with uh, activity number two. For those who are able to participate, uh, the next time I'll ask you for your uh, answers there. A round of applause for Rainiel, everyone. I understand if Rainiel did not come fully prepared for it because what I did was quite unfair for everybody as well. Because you were ambushed into the reading of the material. Again, when we when people prepare for a good poetry reading task, the material is to be studied. You don't have to apologize for anything, Rainiel. Because it was an ambush that I requested for you to read this for the class. Because this is really to be supposedly practiced. You have to prepare for this. And that's one thing that I'd like to also let you uh, capitalize on. When you do the video recording, if the recording didn't, or if the reading at first didn't sound right, didn't sound good, reshoot your video recording. At least you have opportunities to redo if there are mistakes in your reading in order for you to have a better score. Be guided by the rubric that's found in FT4. 
the soft copy of this module is available in our ad model wall for english 9 and then for you to know what the what that link really contains click on the module there's soft copy of it and then you'll find the link in the soft copy form of the of the module that when you click on that link you'll be directed to the page web page where you could find the rubric and again we are after of the better or the justifiable reading of the selection when will you submit your poetry reading of the seven ages of man when will it be submitted you have until monday of next week monday next week will be your deadline because i would not want you to have i would i would not demand that this be submitted right away today tomorrow because you also have sts to prepare for at least i'd like to assume that you'll work on this on sunday and so you could submit it by sunday afternoon or sunday evening deadline is monday monday evening perhaps for as long as the clock has not yet struck tuesday your work won't still be late. Okay. We proceed now. I think this is the last slide. Let me check. Yeah, this is the last slide. So I'll stop the present the presentation of the PowerPoint. We'll proceed now with FTs 1, 2, and 3. The answering of FTs 1, 2, and 3. For FT1, you are to determine the element that is present in each of the sample verses. You are to choose from onomatopoeia, alliteration, and assonance, and consonance. Again, do we call these four, are these four figures of speech? They're not. Correct, Clarice. Let's all be reminded of that. Figures of sound. But they are all under figurative language. They are all part of figurative language. They are not for figures of speech because these four do not have any underlying meaning. But they contribute to how lines or expressions are sounded. Let's start with number one. The bang of the clo closest gun shook my head. What? Which among these four can we find in this sentence? Micah. I hope Micah could turn her microphone off. Oh, on, on, sorry. If Micah couldn't answer, I'll call someone else. What about Alanis? Again, sorry. If you're talking of consonants here, the better, the follow up is. Is there a repeated or dominant consonant sound in this in this number? Krisha seems to be in disagreement to the answer. Krisha, what is your answer to number one? Why did you say that it's for onomatopoeia? Correct. The word bang there is parallel to the sound that guns produce. Like when you read it in books, you'll say you can you could actually see the the police officer shoot a uh, had shot or fired his gun. Bang bang bang. But of course that's not what really it sounded like. You don't really hear a gun that says bang, bang, bang. They, they have a particular sound. But that's the closest sound that we could associate to it. And so number one is for onomatopoeia. By the way, spelling. Be careful with the spelling. It's O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A. Let's do number two. With bloody blameful blade, he bravely broached his bloody boiling breast. By William Shakespeare in his work *A Midsummer Night*, *A Midsummer Night's Dream*. Again, listen to the line: "With bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his bloody boiling breast." Nikki, what? Which among the four can we find in number two? Correct. What made you say, Nikki, that it works well with alliteration? <laughs> hey, 
What consonant sound is dominant? Correct. The B consonant sound. From the word bloody, blameful, blade, broached, bloody, boiling, breast. The B consonant sound, even if it's clustered with another consonant sound, the B consonant sound is really dominant in this line. Thank you, Nikki. Number three. It beats as it sweeps, as it cleans. Again, it beats as it sweeps, as it cleans. Avril, which among the four can we find in number three? Again, consonants because of the s sound. Aside from consonants, what else can we find in number three? What about Claire? Is there anything else that you could find in number three, Claire? The long, is it short E or long E? The long E sound for the word beats, sweeps, cleans. So for number three, it could be assonance or consonance. As for assonance, Claire's answer works. For the dominant long E vowel sound. And for consonants, for the dominant S sound, which is found at the last. It's not an initial sound. Therefore, alliteration doesn't work. Number four, the burning wood hissed and crackled. Again, the burning wood hissed and crackled. M.M., what can you say of number four? Which, sorry, <clears throat> which among the four can we find in this statement? M.M. M.M. seems to be chopped. Like, it's her frame is... Let's try, let's try. Go, M.M. Okay, it's all right, it's all right. So, go for number four. Again, again, sorry. The expansion is exponentially. Correct. Onomatopoeia. Because of the hissing and the crackling sound, that is an imitation to what sound we could hear when wood is being burned. Like when we listen to wood, it's burning. There seems to be like a crackling. And while fire is burning it up, there seems to be like a hissing sound as well. Let's do number five. Number five is a good tongue twister, actually. There's a challenge for, for I'd like to request one to be fluent in the reading of this and not to have a, a stoppage and not to read it slow. Like, Betty bought butter, but the butter was bitter. So Betty bought better butter to make the bitter butter better. Shania, try. Because you were practicing, for sure you practiced this one since Monday. Also, remember the names that I made mention last, especially the names of the proponent of the different... See, it seems like someone is curious of what you've read. <laughs> So it seems like it's a tongue twister in itself. Calling it a possible tongue twister gives us the idea that number five could be... Shania, what's your answer? Yes, Correct. It could be with alliteration because of the dominant B consonant sound. Again, Betty bought butter, but the butter was bitter. So Betty bought better butter to make the bitter butter better. What about Reniel? Can you try number five, Reniel, saying it in one go? Huh? Go. Huh? <laughs> uh, this is science, so I will not say probably something, but most of them are. Uh, I'm just not sure. Like we will provide answers based on the problem. I might 
Oh, Betty Bot Butter Better. Betty Bot Butter Better. Betty Bot Better Butter. To make the bitter butter better. Let's try Clarice. Number five, you read it in one go. Go. She's. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Why are you covering your face? Why are you covering your face? Go, 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 go. <laughs> go, 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 go. See, I'm covering my eyes. Go. <laughs> that really proves it. This one could really qualify as a tongue twister. This could really work as a tongue twister. Calling it a tongue twister justifies Shania's answer earlier that this one works under alliteration. But I tell you, aside from alliteration, it could also be positive of another poetic device. It may also have something else. What else can you see in number five, Claire? Aside from alliteration, what else can we find in number five? With what consonant sound, Claire? If it's ba with, that would be for alliteration. Because ba is an initial consonant sound. The, there's also the er or r sound. In fact, what you, you also have that sound. So there are other consonant sounds that are dominant, not initial. And so they fall under consonants. For number five, you can call it consonants or alliteration. That's fine. So five points for FT1. Let's do FT2. In FT2, our goal is to underline or sorry, encircle words that rhyme. Let's start with number one. I know that you need to grow or else you will be left behind. What words rhyme in number one? Nikki. Correct. Know and grow. What kind of rhyme can we see in number one? Terminal or... Um, Mi middle uh, internal or external uh, rhyme terminal internal or external rhyme Nikki you can look at the lo you can base it on the location of know and grow so what kind of rhyme can be find in number one internal or external Correct. It's an internal kind of rhyme. Take note, internal kind of rhyme is for a set of words, a pair of words within the same line. It could be the last word of that line and any of the words in the same line or just any of the words within the same line, like that of number one. No is the second word and grow is the seventh word. Found within the same line, internal rhyme. Number two. Obviously, you have loud, proud, crowd, and shroud. You should have encircled them. Also, please don't forget to connect them with lines. For number three, hold and bold rhyme. Connect them with lines. Uh, sorry. Astray and pray also rhyme. Connect them with a line. Wait, let's pause this because a teacher just said that I'm fat. Uh, let's 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 pause this call. Someone just said that I'm fat. The, the neighborhood just said that the teacher you're talking to right now is a fat teacher. The neighborhood just said it and he said it in another class. I cannot I cannot fathom that part of the conversation. I did not expect that to come out in the class. No. Teacher, uh, students, I am not fat. I have just been overly fed. <laughs> and I probably am just not suffering from the global crisis that the world is experiencing right now. 
and just healthy. Uh, let's put it that way. Healthy and just really, really healthy. I will, wait, people, I tell you with this body size, I'm really justifying no, the body size that I have. With this body size, kapag, uh, during a global recession, in a global recession, kayong mga payat, mamamatay na. Kaming mga matataba, papayat pa lang. Oh, diba? We are still alive, going to be alive at the time. We still have so much to enjoy. And we will just be seeing the dead people by, by the side of the street. Ah, because that person is thin. Ah, this one is also thin. Oh, welcome to the club. For sure, you were 120 kilos before. That, that is just the thing. I didn't see that. According to Alanis, Alanis said something. Mag, what is this? Magkasakit man mo, sir. <laughs> But I think it's all right, Alanis, because while we are also, we are, the fact is we, our kind of body is kind of prone to, to, to sickness or health issues. But without a doubt, we have already enjoyed so much in this life when it comes to food. Then for you to be thin and that you have not enjoyed much at all, better enjoy so much so that when, if it's really your time that the Lord should harvest you from this world, then you could say the Lord, you could tell the Lord, Lord, I have eaten a lot. Re really trying to justify this body size, though. If you have this body structure that I do right now, let's appreciate this. This kind of body is really huggable. I saw Clarice. I saw Clarice doing this. She sh she nodded her head. Better hug a huggable, better have this body that you could really hug very well now than when you hug someone who's thin and then you're just hugging yourself because the person was so thin. <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm really justifying this body structure. Woo! And the world will become heavier and will be pulled closer to the sun. We are not fat. We are just really healthy. Healthy people. We just have so much in our refrigerators, perhaps, that we decided to really eat them at once. For number four, low rhymes with snow. For number five, sweep rhymes with, rhymes with D. FT3 is quite beautiful because it's giving you the chance to determine the meaning of the line based, of what, based on what you could think of as one that's really significant to the line. I don't want that when you tell your parents later on, ha, Mapa, Sir Sim said that he's all right. It's all right not to be fat. <laughs> Please don't. That, 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 that was just me. That was just me and my body size and how I'm justifying this body size. Wait, but people, I, uh, I'm so proud to also tell you, no, I, wa <laughs> I once weighed, I once weighed 102 kilos. I did. But now, like right now, as of this time, I weigh 96 kilos. I've lost six. And I plan to regain that six kilos again. Because I invested on that. I invested on that amount. I would do my best to gain that back. <laughs> Nikki really shook her head. I think Nikki would, would try to sympathize with me. I appreciate the nodding of Nikki's head, but like, she really felt what I was really saying at this part. Actually, I'm really planning to lose weight. And it's still a plan. It's still a plan. I planned of this years and years ago. The plan is quite a long-term plan. And for some, for so many years, the plan did not become successful. That's why I'll still plan on this. I'm still planning on losing more weight. For long, it's, a, it's definitely a long-term performance task. It's a long-term performance task. As for your FT3, I'd like you to take a picture of your FT3 and have them sent to me through the message tab in Edmodo. You take a picture and then send your answer in Edmodo. And then from there, I'll give a score to whatever. Actually, 
for as long as you will have interpreted FT3, the lines in FT3, you will actually be given credit. I just want to know how you have interpreted these verses or these lines. Questions. Do we have questions on the lesson on reading poetry? If there's none, I bid you good luck and God bless in the ST that you'll take on Monday next week. Take note, my ST on Monday is scheduled at 7.30 to 8.30. So it's the ST that you are to take in Monday morning. And then, if there are issues with the internet connection, please communicate with me right away. I think during the weekend, I'll send a text message so that you could have my phone number as well as to your parents. Communicate, contact me right away so that whatever quiz you will have submitted, I'll just delete that and I'd let you retake the test at such time that the connection has already become better. Or, I don't know if you've experienced it last year, Edmodo sometimes would crash. Despite our good internet connection, we would send an answer and when the quiz has been sent to the teacher, no answer came out. Have you experienced that? Please, if that happens, notify the teacher right away so that we could do something about it the soonest time possible. And then you can retake the test. And for that, that will be all for this afternoon, grade 8. Goodbye and thank you.